Hey, what's up everyone? Jonathan Allen here again. Today we're going to jump right into this video uh, because we have a lot to cover and it's just, it's really fun. Uh, so we are talking about virtual instruments today. Today being part one, uh, we're going to focus on drums specifically. So when we're in the studio, there's a lot of things to consider. There's many options for drums. We personally go with electronic drums and we use a virtual instrument for that. Now, like I said, everything is considering on your space and how you need to operate for things. Uh, in my home studio, I do have one attached neighbor at our house here. And, you know, I opted to go with electronic drums rather than having to strategically plan out my drum sessions and make sure that the neighbors are okay, that I'm going to be playing at specific times and uh, have the option really to only do it during the day or on the weekends. Um, I mean, when you're inspired and you want to record something, you want to be able to just press record and get going and electronic drums give you that option, uh, especially uh, for if the type of setup that I have, or if you may have as well, or if you're in an apartment complex, anything like that. Now, the drums that we use, I have an Alesis drum kit. It's mesh heads. It's a very, very cheap kit. I'll have a link to that down in the description. Now, those are affiliate links, so they help us out a little bit if you choose to buy something uh, that we have down there, if that item, or if you just choose, you know, something at random that helps us out just a little bit. Now, the kit that we have here, we do use uh, Easy Drummer. And with Easy Drummer, it gives you the options to have tons of different types of drums that you can use. So what we'll do is we'll come down here um, to the Browse tab at the bottom. Okay, so make sure we're on the Instruments tab. Then we're going to find Easy Drummer 3. Let's close some of this stuff for us. I'm not bothered by that. But Easy Drummer 3 by Tune Track, we're going to click and drag over to our session, and it's going to open the instrument. Once the instrument is opened, we kind of know the feel we want for this. So we're going to come over here, go down to our Nashville uh, sound set, which it is an additional download that you can get from them uh, for a cheap cost. And we want to use brushes. So we switched over to the brush kit. And then from here, we're going to start our recording process. So the one thing we want to mention here is while you're playing on the electronic drum set, you can actually see the response on screen. So what you're playing, what what pads you're hitting, things light up and they emphasize so you can understand what part of the drums are going, especially if you have more than one person in the studio, uh, somebody sitting at control center like Eli is today, or um, you're sitting here, somebody else is playing drums. Uh, it really just kind of gives you a, a great visual on the representation of what is being played there, especially if you don't really understand drum lingo that much, um, if you don't know what specific parts of the drums are called. Now, that's one thing that I do recommend, especially at an engineer status. If you're you're sitting here, you're the person recording, um, learn, learn what some of these things are called. But other than that, uh, when we record it, we record enable and we press you know, the play button or the record button, whichever you have here, and it starts looking just like it would for a normal track. Now, these are not recording audio inputs because we're not plugging in an instrument or a microphone. It is strictly recording MIDI. So the MIDI gives us some free um, rain for things, a little leeway for things, because we can quantize things that are out of sync. And we will get to that in just a moment as well. But what we have here, we'll jump ahead a little bit to the recording for everything. and Or I'm, I should say what we did record for everything. So you can hear exactly what that sounds like. And this is the style Eli wanted for his song that we're going to be releasing at the end of this series. So take a listen to the drums that we have set up. So 
so with the MIDI notes, like I said, one of the cool things is we can quantize these. We can get these on beat. We can get these tightened up and really just, you know, fit. It sits. It, it's not, it's not going to be clashing with other instruments. It's going to be on time. You're really going to have some fun with that and making sure that everything is good. So what we're going to do to quantize, if you find your track that's up top and you double click on it, it will open up in the uh, bottom here under the edit tab. Now you're going to see all these little triangles that are put up in here. These are all your MIDI notes. So what you can do to quantize something is you can click inside this edit window there and you can option A or Windows A to select everything. And then you can go up to the little plane here where you can choose your different quantization settings. That was a little bit harder for me to say, but yes, uh, you can choose your settings here, how you want to quantize something. Do you want it on the quarter note or the eighth note or the 16th note or the 32nd note? Do you want to swing? Do you want dotted? It's There's all sorts of different things. Now for this one, we needed to stick with 16th notes. Now for this specific recording. Like I said, I, I play drums and I've been playing drums for a uh, uh, long many years, but uh, train beats are something that I don't normally do. I'm not, not quite sure if I've really ever played to a song that needed a train beat, honestly. Um, and it's been about 30 years I've been playing drums. So for this, I, I really had to record it separately. So I did the kick on one channel just played the kick through uh and then we just re-recorded just snare just so i could focus specifically on that and make sure that i was playing what i should be playing when i should be playing it now that said we still needed to quantize things like you saw there but uh, i think the end result turned out really well still was able to add a little bit of symbols in there just to give some emphasis to things um just to make it a little more attractive to the ears while you're while you're chugging along um but i think the end result was really good with this so next week we are going to be doing some more virtual instruments. We're actually going to be getting into a little more broad scope of things. I know Eli wants to add some strings, possibly some piano. So we're going to pop into those instruments and kind of dive into what they look like, uh, how you can uh, sculpt your sounds, change the sounds to try and get what you're looking for. Next week, we're going to be talking more about virtual instruments. Like I said, so if you have any comments or questions for today's video, drop them down in the comment section. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can see these new videos that are coming out soon. We appreciate you guys so much. We hope you have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you next time. I will fly to